Dude, I started the stream on time. Alright, hello every single person. Welcome to the stream. My name is Bandao. You may remember me from youtube.com slash Bandao or twitch.tv slash Bandao. Isn't it weird that they've got slash TV? They're not even on TV. Who even, who, who decided that? Uh, so, my name is Bandao. Um, and uh, today is the 4th of April, 2022. That is correct. It is the first stream of April. And because it is the first, or uh, well, the first Sunday of April was yesterday, Daylight Savings has officially ended in uh, New South Wales, Victoria, Tasmania, and South Australia in, uh, in this country, which means the clocks went back an hour. Uh, we have moved from plus 11 to plus 10 and it's thrown everyone off. Also, by the way, this, uh, oh, I think Western Australia wants to do it. I gotta double check. <laughs> I can never tell. Um, but we've got Northern Territory and Queensland. They don't do daylight savings. So we're now on the same time as them. Well, Northern Territory's half an hour behind, so South Australia's at the same time. It's very weird. Time zones are very confusing. Why don't we use UTC all the time? It's because people don't like waking up at 7 p.m. So anyways, let us get right into the game. Uh, so, whoop, whoop, whoop. There we go, oh, I got the audio, and I got the video, there we go. Uh, so I fixed the right stick, by the way, all I had to do was just set a bit of a dead zone. Uh, I did not fix the start and select buttons being the PS4 buttons, but, eh, oh well, I don't think people will mind. Uh, so how are you all doing this fine, uh, Monday? Uh, my day has been pretty alright. Um, yeah, that's about it, really. It's been pretty alright. Um, we've had, uh, we've had some fun, fun things going on. Uh, oh, can't show, can't show that. Is, am I gonna get copyright strikes on that one? I'm curious. I actually, I, what I, what I've been doing recently for the VODs, Here's some more meta, meta blendo talks about the stream kind of thing. Uh, but one thing I've been doing is uploading the VODs directly uh, via Twitch to YouTube and then always editing the video because I've been recording all the streams myself, which means I can do a little bit of an audio tweak if, if the stream is too quiet in one regard. Um, and also uh, I can um, uh, use the higher quality that I get from recording locally to then put on YouTube. Randall is running about, so... Uh, so I've been doing that, but what's kind of interesting is that you can basically use that to sandbox what parts of your video are going to get copyright claimed. Uh, so it's kind of interesting seeing that, yeah, no, pretty much every... Uh, every bit was claimed. Every single video was claimed, so... Uh, in the last stream, uh, I did the first two out of Three worlds. And uh, in this stream, I'm doing the rest. So, uh, this is the Sugar Shack. This is all snow themed. Now, I remember this level moderately. It's got a bit of a jam in the music, apparently. It's got snowmen who are. Uh, we're just here to, like, ruin your day, really. What even are these snowmen? Like, what are we... What is actually, like... I can't even f fathom what's... What's, like, the three themes we've had going on. Oh my gosh. What is actually going on here? Um, what are actually the themes of the levels? Like, I can understand the urban setting, because, you know, you're scaring kids in the city, I guess. Uh, Egypt? Not too sure about that one. Snow? Like, is it because there's the Himalayas part of the film? Is it because, like, you know, they, they run into the abominable snowman who, by the way, is not going to appear in this game in any way, shape, or form? Uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is some platform. I assume they're telling me about ledge climbing, which is <sighs> fast. I'll just say that. It's very fast. Oh boy. Oh my goodness. So okay, I'm over I'm over the ledge. Uh do I go left or right? I'm gonna go left. 
Spyro has taught me well. Oh, no, it hasn't. Oh, yes, it has. <laughs> Why, yes. Why, yes. I think it's because you get your first jump, like, really liberally in this game, so. Uh. But yeah, yeah, so this stream, pretty much just gonna finish the game. We've got four levels, including this one. Uh. And then. I just go back to all the old levels and finish up a little bit that's remaining. Um. I mean, as well, uh, there's 96 of these guys to scare in the entire game. This is, I'm five and a half minutes into the stream and I st sat through starting up the game and walking to this level and that's four enemies already, in, or four, four of the, the kids in this level already, so don't feel like it's going to take too long if uh, you missed out on the first stream, or do feel like it's going to take too long because this game, it's Monsters, Inc. Oh, the camera is caught over there. So, uh, uh, just a mechanic reminder, you pick up the scare juice to build your scare bar. And when it reaches certain tiers, you can scare robot kids of that level. Uh, this is like just barely outside my jump. In fact, there's a thingy here that says, looks like you could stack some firewood, like... Did, was this ever a feature that I can't even recall? Oh, yeah, yeah, picking up boxes. Once. <laughs> Once, so... Uh, this is, a. Uh, oh my gosh, I just got, like... Uh, I was gonna say, uh, slapped, but... Uh, nope, nope, that word is sacred. I cannot use it in the same context now. Do I only need two, or do I need three? No, I can do it with two. I can do it with two. Okay. So you just need to climb up onto this ledge. Thank goodness that this building has a ledge. You can climb into the chimney to get inside the cabin. I guess this is also, you know, person number four out of, or five out of, uh, eight. Is it eight? Yeah, yeah. Also, I was thinking off the top of my head, what is actually stopping you from getting all the, uh, all the kids before, uh, you get, uh, all the tokens? And the answer is because Kid number eight does not appear until you get all the tokens. So you can get seven kids. Uh, I don't need to save. Don't need it. So. Ah, yes. Did you, did you notice the post-processing effect? Wazowski! I think that's the first time the three-eyed guy has appeared here. I, I'm trying to now recall, like, what was the plan? What was the villain's plan in this, in this film? Was he supposed to make, like, the ultimate scaring machine, which is basically just actual machine? What does it do? It just sucks oxygen out of the kid? It's, I don't, I don't even know. It's not, like, no, I don't even know. I can't even recall, so, oh well. But yeah, nah, so this week has been a, um, a decently interesting week. I feel like there's been a few things that have come up, uh, but I think the most important, important, most noteworthy one, uh, and, and, and who knows, some people will probably say like, oh, it's not that noteworthy, but, uh, the big one I find is that uh, E3 has, uh, been cancelled, uh, ish, ish, what it, what, what it is really is, uh, E3 is, um, not going to be an event, basically. So, all the companies can still feel free to announce stuff around the time, which is probably going to happen anyways, but uh, E3 as an organized event is not happening, um, and uh, that's, like, not even with a, a COVID version. Can I say the word? Oh, whoops. Um, that's not with that. That's just, uh, you know, there's going to be no event. So, what does this really mean? Um, it could be the end of an era. It could come back next year, you never know. Um, but I do feel like, um, first Nintendo and then, uh, Sony, uh, the game has shifted a little bit, uh, to basically being, hey, like, yeah, internet distribution is a really powerful tool for conveying demos, for conveying, uh, videos. Um, a lot of people just get their stuff from, uh, yeah, like, they'll just look up news on YouTube, or even, uh, to some degree, they'll look it up on, um, gaming journalism website, I'll just get news from there, um, 
paraphrased. And so it's just like, you know, why have a specific event that's like, oh, you know, you kind of rely on the press to feed the information back to back to people when, you know, most people can just find out for themselves and also the press are going to do the pretty obvious point of collecting all of it. Um, so, yeah, to, to a layman, and myself included, I'm kind of like, yeah, I, I don't think it's a real big loss to, you know, to not have a big event. Because everyone's going to be announcing stuff around the time anyways. If anything as well, it means that they won't compete, like, over the same, uh, place as each other. Um... Like, because that was a big, that's a big problem with E3, is when, like, one uh, developer wanted to stretch their time out, they wanted to show, like, demos at certain times, and meanwhile, you know, another company is showing off stuff in, in their broadcasts, and so, which, uh, granted, like, all conventions are like that, there's only so much time they can book the floor, uh, and obviously there's more than one stage, so someone's gonna, you know, have to opt to see one thing over another. But it feels like, you know, when, when, when you're doing things digitally, especially, there's not really... Oh, the kid moves away. The kid keeps moving away. There we go. Uh, there's not really any need to, to fight over that. You can do your announcement in your own exclusive block, and you'll probably get a bit more attention out of it as well. Um, so, doesn't really mean much, I guess, in the end. Uh, obviously, by the way, fish here, uh, is the greatest killer of monsters. And what are the penguin things? I don't know. Can you break this? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, no, you must break the other door to open the shortcut. You can't... Don't, don't think you got away scot-free by not beating the level. I, by, I love, by the way, that this is like a, a scene transition. It's so small, like, you can barely tell that, like, this is... I, I love, by the way, that they've also reused the sand castle and turned it into a snow castle. Um, so, uh, yeah, this is uh, this is a long bit of pain, basically. Uh, well, I might as well get this kit. Oh, nope, never mind. I'm not going to get that jump done. I'm pretty sure I can roll up here and... Okay, there's only, there's only a few things. This is the ski lift. This is the ski lift level. We've got to have ski... What's the term for like this like beat? Just like dun 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 dun. Is that it? <laughs> My brain's going with scar, but scar is a lot more than than just that. I'm gonna say scar esque because like scar needs the instrumentation to make it work. If you don't have trumpets, you know, are you really scar? Alright. Wah. The double jump makes it work, but sometimes the double jump, like, you, you jump too late. And your double jump does not, does not like working. But yeah, I thought I'd have more to say on the E3 topic, actually, but... No, that, that, that's basically it. I don't really think there's much of it. Um, if anything, it is going to make it a little easier to digest everything. Because I remember um, last year I tried going through the Indie Live Expo first. Which, ironically... Not ironically, but... Uh, unexpectedly to me, ended up being like the most like substantial part of E3. It was a long conference, showed off a lot of, a lot of stuff, but in turn, I actually found out about a handful of games that I've definitely been looking more forward to, whereas like other companies, um, like this stuff is there. It's out, oh, oops. This stuff's out there, but uh, I didn't really find anything tons exciting. Um, like, what was the big, like, standout for me? The, the Kirby game was... Announced, was it? I can't even remember what Nintendo showed off. Yeah, I can't even remember. I remember Forza Horizon 5 being thrown off. And looking and going, that's another Forza game. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Imagine my surprise when uh, Forza Horizon 5 was another Forza game. By the way, the top of the ski lift is yet another area with a way to leave and go down. So I'm going to see if there's a... I don't think there's really a clean way of going about this. You might as well have to go down this side. 
You ready, by the way? This is a separate map. Have I actually experienced a separate map yet? You gotta hit start as well. And it goes down two ways. This controls very oddly. It feels a little sluggish and also I have no idea where exactly it's pointing. But that's some good jumps. Uh, obviously you can't go backwards, so that's fine. Oh, I mean it locks me on, but it didn't quite make it clear where to jump, so that's okay. And uh, yeah, that's his ski lift. Good thing they let you go back to the top. With a loading screen. Mike, don't touch him there! Okay, let's let's have a second stab at this. Some, oh, nope, nope. <laughs> I'm not getting it today. I apologize if uh, you can hear some traffic. It's been very very noisy on the on the uh, expressway. So uh, I don't know why. I think uh, April has brought out all the all the tuna cars. Everyone, everyone with the, the really loud engines and mufflers, um, love kind of legging it when they get to a point outside my house. So, we'll see how that goes, but it shouldn't be too bad. It just, it's, it's louder when you're in a quiet room, but, you know, when you, when you hear it on a mic, it's not as bad. Because a mic is very directional, whereas my ears are very, like, you know, one of them pointing to outside the... Outside the room. Yeah, but yeah. Yeah. Other than that though, like, beginning of April is a, a weird time. Graphics card prices are continuing to lower, which is always a great thing. Um, we're starting to get into the rumor mill of the next gen quite a bit as well. Uh, the one common thing that I hear people say, and I... I'm a little bit on the fence about, is when people say, uh, oh, the new uh, Ada Lovelace is going to be the generation, whether it's going to be called Ada or Lovelace, not too sure, but it's going to be one. By the way, two exits. And I missed the, the coin again. I gotta sit through another loading screen. They're quick loading screens, but like, you know, you gotta cut to black, have the bar move. And it's the same level as well, so it's just a full load unload, which... It's not, like, necessary, but it's, like, you know, it's safe. I can understand why games do full loads. Like, um, like, especially as well. A lot of, like, old shooters, I remember, it's, like, if you do a quick load, like, wow. I swear, did I jump? Did I try pressing X? Someone, someone, catch that out. Um. Uh, but there's a lot of old games, and it's, like, you do a quick load, and it's, like, it's not an immediate load. It's a full level load. You just don't notice, because... The game loads so quick nowadays. Half-Life is uh, probably a great example. It's just like, you know, levels in Half-Life load very, very quickly. I think Half-Life 2 doesn't reload the entire level if it doesn't have to. So. Look at that, they did a different picture as well. Um, uh, that back down here. Oop. I can hear my disc. When that, when that happens. I guess I didn't break open the other door to get the shortcut. That's okay. So, let's make my way... Making my way uphill. LOD looks really bad. Dun -dun 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 -dun. I say it's bad looking, but like, you know, it's a necessity. I prefer LOD swapping to... Um, not have you are in there except you are not you are outside there um i prefer lod swapping to um you know to, to fog it looks kind of ugly at times the lod swapping but you know what like at least i can see where i'm going actually sometimes the fog it works it was working in shadow man i didn't find that the draw distance ever was in the way um i just mentioned that because i was playing it uh, last week, and uh, also, I guess, at the uh, start of uh, this week. So now you can go in and out. There you go. Um, so that game's done, dusted. 
all I can say about the Nintendo 64 version is, uh, yeah, no, it's it's mostly the same game, but definitely a simpler experience. Uh, but that wasn't really the main game that I was playing this week. There were two games that I definitely did finish, and I have a fair bit to say about both of them. Um, it was kind of an interesting experience, so I'll, I'll jump into game number one. So game number one is a DOS game from 1997 titled Mad Space. Uh, there's a subtitle, I'm gonna say it was, was, like, To Hell and Beyond or something, I think that's what it was called. Uh, what this is, is an FPS game just on its own engine? It's, it's on its own. Uh, it reminds me a lot of the build engine, I think that's probably the best, like, comparison, which for a game that came out in 97, isn't too bad. Um, but... What set this game slightly apart is it's got two two features. One, uh, the weapons in both hands can be, or one, there's two hands of weapons, which is kind of neat, uh, and the weapons can be individually swapped. So you start off with a, a, a loadout with uh, two, um, like, laser guns, and then you got, like, a, one that also uses energy and does, like, a little lobbed grenade. And then the last one's like a little, like, pellet shotgun. I love how he's already rescued Boo. Why is this, like, very hitchy? Maybe my disc is scratched. No, oh, that door could have just opened on its own. Also, where is this door? I, I never even... So, for reference for people on YouTube, because you're obviously not seeing this, this is the part of the film where uh, where uh, Mike and Sully get chucked out into the, the Himalayas, and there's a door out in the middle of nowhere. Who put that door there? Why did it work for a moment? Like, it's, it's actually just a door frame out in space. I don't even know where it belongs, but sure. Uh, I don't know where the other robots are, so I'm just gonna effectively abandon this level. Oh wait, there was this one. Let's get him. I mean, all my progress is pretty saved, and I'm gonna come back into this level at the end of the, the stream, anyways. And he's dead. <laughs> he's dead, Jim. I don't know where number seven is. So, it's probably on that higher ledge. Uh, but yeah, so you, you can have weapons in two slots. It's kind of neat. Uh, it's a little... <laughs> Oddly, I I felt like, oh, perhaps people won't know how to switch weapons. To, to switch weapons, you hold down the weapon, like, slot. Because you can have ten weapons, so one through zero on your keyboard. And you hold it down, and then you click left-click or right-click while holding it down, and you switch it to that weapon. Or alternatively, there's E, which is the next weapon if you wanted to switch like that. But I found it was actually kind of intuitive. I actually guessed that. Um, so that wasn't too bad. Uh, the other thing that's also a little neat about this game is that uh, it regularly, I'm going to say regularly, features non-Euclidean geometry. So basically uh, a room that can't exist in reality. It's it's uh, too, um, you know, like, like there's a corridor when you go around a corner that would pass back onto itself, but, you know, the room is laid out in that kind of fancy way. Um, I can't think of too many games that pull off the non-Euclidean look. Um, although, again, uh, the Duke Nukem 3D example, um, if anyone played the, uh, secret level, the first secret level in that game, it's got a little bit of a non-Euclidean nature where it's like, it's a, it's a ring that then, like, lo like, loops back onto itself. Um... And, uh, that one's neat, but this one, it happens regularly. Uh, it's not too fancy. The world, the, the non-Euclidean stuff is effectively just sector over sector. If I had to describe it, it's not using, um, you know, like, it's not teleporting you to another side of the map. There's a couple of teleports in the map, but they're very, you know, they're clearly teleports and, you know, there's nothing too weird going on about them. The non-Euclidean stuff, it's fancy, uh, it's... Do you like how, by the way, I got one hit by the guy, then I slide backwards, just on my own, and then I fell off into the water, which meant death. I can't scare him, can I? 
It's, hold on, I haven't even shown what happened. Oh no. I guess this is yellow. I can't tell. There's yellow and orange are so similar in color. Uh, but yeah. Uh, so those two mechanics in hand, what actually is the game in terms of a shooter? Well, it's a simple walk to the end of the level kind of first person shooter. Uh, it's got enemies that almost all of them are flying robots. It gets very annoying how many enemies uh, will knock you back. Or just hit you and you can't do anything about it but you can try and kill them quicker um this is a oh okay this is an actual hold forward kind of moment uh oh i yeah no no i totally got that i totally walked in and there's a red guy in there as well very cruel very cruel i knew i should have come here a bit later but i stole his chips so it's okay um yeah, the enemies are not fun. On top of that, I can't tell you how many of the other weapons feel. There's a rocket launcher one, there's a heat-seeking uh, kind of pellet one. Um, but ultimately, uh, when you die, you go, you start from the beginning of the level. Uh, it doesn't undo any of your level progress, so it doesn't like load anything, which is neat. Um, but it effectively restarts you back to full health, full armor. Uh, or f full energy rather, because you've got an energy bar. Uh, and then the starting weapon roster. Very, like, about halfway in the game, it started getting absolutely horrendous trying to rely on the quick saves. Uh, because there's just areas that just feel like, you know, they're not designed, not designed with a player in mind. There's too much stuff going on, there's not enough health going on. Um, there's kind of parts in the levels which involve, um, uh, like these, like, I, nice, uh, these blue or yellow, uh, balls that effectively will full charge your health or your energy and then significantly take off the other one. Most of the time I found earlier on, I'd find the energy balls, which means I would have no health, which is kind of pointless. But if you get rid of the, if you get health and you get rid of your energy, you end up barely having ammo with the two laser weapons that you rely on. Now you've got the shotgun, that's your one starting weapon that doesn't involve, um, it doesn't involve that ammo, and I ended up relying on that way too much. It also felt like it was doing lots of damage, so I went with that. Um, but yeah, now the maps are okay, uh, they're not too fancy. I got a little confused earlier on, um, because it wasn't quite clear that you could, um, uh, break some walls. It, it kind of looks like you could just, um, you know, couldn't figure it out, but, uh, 23, oh, 23, oh, jeez, 23, ah, 23, 19, ah, see, that's a, that's a reference, um, but, uh, yeah, yeah, it, it, by level 4, very early in that level, you'd find out that, um, that, yeah, no, you can't go anywhere unless you, uh, know that you can shoot certain walls, it's not very clear, um, also kind of confusingly, uh, the switches can be shot. We missed this whole part, by the way. We missed this whole part where they were in the Himalayas. They're just suddenly back in the factory. Back in the, back in the business. Also, this is a wonderful coincidence of a, of a moment. Dude, what if Sully legitimately died here? They've got family. They've got friends around the office. Like, what? How? What? I don't even know. He's leaning on, like, a barrel that would totally stack over if he lands on it as well. Uh, I love, by the way, there's no way, easy way to get back unless I had the, the item to leave here. Although that did apparently get me, like, slightly further over, so... I could probably get the two, like, kids in the, the igloo, and then it's just like, this would be easy, easy days getting out of here, so we'll go with that. Um, so yeah, yeah, you can shoot switches as well, and there were a handful of times when it's just like, yeah, no, you, you needed to shoot switches. Um, so it's a little confusing. Uh, the game did not have keys, so it had that as a benefit. 
Unfortunately, the game had switches to basically replace keys and time switches. So you'd hit a switch and a door somewhere on the level would open up. And it's really not clear where the door would open up. Bit of map searching, you'll figure it out. Uh, none of the levels took too long. And ultimately, I think the game took about seven hours. So it wasn't the absolute longest game, but it's definitely like a substantial length. Um, uh, circle, circle. Okay. <laughs> This is very scary. Very scary. Um, so I assume the last, or either the last token. Yeah, it is the last token. It's probably just in that one power up that I haven't yet gotten. So I'll come back at a later point. <laughs> Pretty soon later, sometime this stream later, I'll get those items. Okay, so I, I will call that the level and leave and and uh, return with an item later on. Uh, but yeah, if I if I had to grade Mad Space, I would say... Uh, oh, oh, I should also mention. So this game is incredibly obscure. Because I looked on Steam, I definitely owned it for a handful of years. I looked on Steam, it's got 16 reviews. And it's published by Night Dive for Steam. It's not like, like, you could probably witness, what did I get hit by twice there? Weird. Uh, you could probably easily witness this game, like, see that it exists, but you kind of have to actively go, oh, that game, or, oh, it's published by Night Dive, I look at it, oh, it goes for $2 on, on Steam in Australia, maybe a bit less if you're in the US. Um, and then you have to also accept the fact that it's a, it's a shooter that came out in 1997 that's obviously running in DOSBox. And also the trailer looks hilarious because they use footage from the final boss, like the same recorded clip back to back, like twice. And then there's like one other gameplay part that they show off. Um, so you barely get a glimpse of what the game is actually like. Um, and yeah, it's obscure. No one's written a Game Facts guide. There's like all the two streams of the game are fairly recent and they're also entirely in Russian. Also, uh, when I mentioned getting stuck on level 4, yeah, guess guess what the one stream I tried looking for to get help did? Get stuck on that bit for like 40 minutes. Wander around, no idea what to do, and eventually just like shot in the dark, hit the wall, and I was like, oh, oh. Like he was, he was using the no-clip cheat, he was trying to figure that stuff out and it was not working out. So, but no, he figured it out eventually. Uh, this is a, I was going to say, this is an interesting level in the sense of like it's got all these corridors going about, which means it's somewhat larger of a level than the last ones, but not like, not really that large. It's got the 12 bar blues as music, man. You know, my favorite Monsters Inc. jam. I, I really, you know, when, when the credits roll in about like 15 minutes, I'm going to look up who... Who every single person who worked on this is, because I love doing, I love showing off the credits. I think that every single person who works on video games, like, you know, pat on the back, you know, you do what I would never, like, I would dream to do, but then I'd be like, I would never have the, um, you know, the willpower, um, to really, like, play on a game, because, or, or to make a game, because uh, it's a lot of effort, it's a lot of changing specs, um, in some cases, like these games, the very very quick turnaround cycles um and uh, obviously you run the uh the the more catastrophic risks of game doesn't work out company starts to be very mean so you know the actual devs like you know they do they do they do god's work i'll tell you that um so that's why i do like showing off the credits uh which brings me to game number two and this is actually uh, oh, I might, I might have said two games earlier. I'm going to mention a third one. I've started playing it. I haven't gotten a full impression. Game number two I've played uh, is a wonderful segue. I've been playing Forager. Forager is a humble published game. Came out of Early Access in 2019. Um, and uh, a lot of people note that the lead dev or head of the company, one of the two, I haven't looked it up, uh, very, very easily dismisses the fact that more than one person worked on the game. Uh, on top of that, 
Uh, people are saying he took the money and ran, because apparently there was supposed to be a multiplayer component to the game, and it's there in the game, by the way, as a, like, not as a menu feature, but, like, it lists the, uh, the roadmap of the game, uh, still in there. And, uh, yeah, it lists that there should be a multiplayer component coming out, um, sometime in 2020. Yeah, uh, it's not there, so. Uh, there is mod support. I don't know what mod support entails. Mod support is a very nebulous term because most people who talk about mod support are players of mods and not necessarily developers. So whenever, and, and I'll say safely as myself, someone who did not know how to program um, when Minecraft mod APIs were like, why, why don't they make an official API? And now that, you know, I've worked on a lot of software, it's like, yep, no, it's, uh, it's, it's hard work. And also it could mean anything because in theory, any custom content is mod support to some degree. So, uh, obviously, I don't think it's a munch. Like, oh my gosh, jeez. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's there in the bottom left. There he is. No April Fool's jokes. I, I'm, I'm terrible with April Fool's jokes because I never, I never like making a joke that's mean spirited. And I know that like some people really, really, uh, you know, take a, take a bit of a thing. So the best I did was I changed. Um, I've got a Discord bot and I changed my uh, avatar with it. So, so it's like you're looking and go, wait a minute. But like that's about it, because you can figure out like who's who really easily. But I thought I'd be neat. So uh yeah nah. How's it going, Mr. Zen Zen? Welcome to the stream. Population us. You'll be pleased to know this is the last level of the game. And uh the plan for the rest of the stream is to go back through every other level and pick up collectibles. Uh, which means if you don't know what the rest of this game looks like, you will briefly get a glimpse of what the rest of the game looks like. Uh, this is stream 2. The completionist. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't... Why, why is my jump not, not working out? What is going on here? Yeah, you can see it's like... Awkwardly not high enough. Weird. Uh... Yeah, I I do feel like I do want to complete a lot of games, and game number three, by the way, uh, is going to be the, the death now. Um, whoop. Actual pit. Actual pit. Okay. Uh, well, I guess I can scare this guy. Um, but uh, but there's, there's a handful of games where it's just like, no, nah, I'm, I'm fine just playing like an any percent. Um, like, uh, I just played Quake on stream. And for that, I was like, yeah, I'll just do a, a playthrough on normal. It's not the most enjoyable to watch the whole thing on, um, you know, on a really hard difficulty. Maybe it is, if, if I'm good, but I'm not the best. I kind of quick save scum a bunch. So, a normal playthrough seemed like the most appropriate just to show off on stream. He did it. Oh, and he's dead. Uh, so to the people on YouTube who are going to see this without a... Without a stream, or without... The video, this is the bit where uh, Steve Buscemi says a bunch of stuff saying his personal woes against uh, John Goodman. Yeah, oh no, that is Steve Buscemi. Uh, <laughs> I wish the clips are from the movie, but uh, there's only so many, so many clips that uh, they can put into the game. Um, I love as well, like, it's, like, the video quality is decent, but it's totally not DVD quality, which is, uh, I guess by the time this game came out in 2001, like, you could do DVD quality because the PS2 was out. Uh, exit the level, oh look, the scene literally continues. There are, there are no clips of the, uh, the snow, the abominable snowman in this game, which is very disappointing. They didn't have MP4, yeah. I'm curious what kind of compression they um they would have done for a lot of these PS1 videos. Because I feel like almost all of them use the exact same, like, toolkit that Sony probably provides. So there's, like, probably some amount of compression going on. Because they all look the same. AVI? Oh, I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised. Um... I know that on, on PC, a lot of games nowadays will, like, lean towards Bink video. But that was a bit after this time, so what would they have done on PC? A lot of P a lot of PC games, I feel like, would have done just very, very low color. 
flingshots. The flingshots. Uh, that icon doesn't scream out to me. A uh, flingshot, but sure. Sure, we'll go with that. There we go. Sully has no teeth. Um, anime video instantly. Anime video. There we go. Um, you must collect 125 coins. And he also cheats in this one. I love that he, he cheats it. Too, too bad he's really slow. Like, I've already outrun him, so. So we'll see how well this goes. But yeah, no, this is actually the last, like, new level in the game that you'll see, by the way. Um, I, I, I said at the beginning of the last stream, this game is short. And, uh, I know it's short, so. I thought it'd be a fun one just to, just to play. Uh, kind of tick off another box of a... A Disney game of some variety to play off, but I think these games are interesting just because uh, also I can I can use this It sends you to a destination. This is not the end of the level And Randall uses it so you kind of have to um, I find these licensed games from this era to be kind of interesting because a lot of them are like a fairly um, Average I'd say or they, they wear their inspirations on their sleeve, like, uh, there's a Treasure Planet game I remember playing, and it's, uh, like a Tomb Raider light. Um, just light. Uh, but it also does, like, the Zelda kind of movement system. Ooh. 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 Okay. Let's not skip. Not skip the other one. By the way, I love how it doesn't need to load this one when you retry. Okay, let, let's not skip both of the both of the bits with the coins. But yeah, like, and then sorry, oh, train of thought. Um, <laughs> yeah, so some of the games wear their inspirations, but it's weird because it came out of like parts where like Aladdin, Lion King, uh, Ducktales, I guess. There's a handful of, like, really good licensed games that came out just a couple of years before these ones. Um, and then D Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, Kingdom Hearts is a very interesting one as well. Uh, cause, like, I guess it's, it's not, it's not licensed, it's, sorry, it's, it's licensed intellectual properties, but it's not, oh, um... But I guess it's not like in, in anticipation of a film or, or a tie-in with something, so the deadline isn't like being pushed. But I always find it's weird in contrast to say, um, the Toy Story 2 game is an interesting one for me, just because it's a ironically, sorry, unironically good game. Like, I think it's, it's pretty alright. Uh, it's not absolutely amazing, but it's like, this is something that like people can do with like a, a deadline. Uh, darkness in Darkness, there you go. And yes, Kingdom Hearts is a game that I just... I've not played. Also, we did it! ...to congratulate James P. Sullivan and Michael Wazowski for their on-target completion of level one of the Academy. L level one. I am honored to present you both with these bronze medals to commemorate your achievement. Congratulations to you both. Uh, almost Monster University. So, I I love how it's graduation, but what it... What what the plot of this game is, is that they apply to Monsters, Inc. And then this is the the training process. So, so I guess, like, this is, um, you know, this is the six interviews to get into your... To get into your fang job. <laughs> And, and so it's like, oh, we just did level one of the interviews. Um, and so what I now have to do is jump back to the beginning of the game and we go for the silver and the gold medals. Um, yeah, because that was all the levels. And actually, if you stop there, there's no conclusion to this game. I think there were credits on the main menu. Um, so what exactly am I missing? Uh, well, pretty much every level I've gotten that screen bar all the way up to the top. Uh, which means that there's kids and or tokens. I love, by the way, uh, you cannot stand here. But you can see in the back there, there's something there. 
Hey. So as long as I didn't miss a kid on the way, but I'm very certain. There's always a, a power-up somewhere on the level that I just never got to use because it wasn't, you know, available. And now it's here. So I go down the slide, or rather I stand at the top, and then I load into a different map. So each of the levels kind of keeps going on for a little bit, but uh, probably not significantly enough to, um, to really mean too much. But I think this first level is probably going to show off the most out of any of the other levels. It's got Donkey Kong barrels. And how many games did the Donkey Kong barrels thing? I know a Bugs Life did it. It was a tree as well. It was a much larger tree. This is uh, some gripping gameplay. You'll see me just do the double jump, which adds momentum. But uh, yeah, it's it's a bit bizarre as well because Monsters uh, University did the whole like, oh, they, you know, after. Oh. And then he disappears. <laughs> he disappears. What What's up the top? Why, yes, there is a kid who jumps off. Nintendo didn't sue everyone out of existence. Um, oh, with the Donkey Kong barrels? Maybe. I don't know if they licensed barrels. I think they licensed, uh... I think they ran into their own troubles, actually, because they had, um... Donkey Kong. And, uh, people like King Kong. There we go. Uh... Also, for reference, all ten of the coins are, um, on that slide. So, I'm gonna need to figure out which of these two exits actually drops me back at the top of there. Tell me. Use your elevator to go back and try the slide again. This one. Okay. Cool. As long as it doesn't hit a loading screen. Good on him. Good on him. Alright. So the goal is just to get these coins. But yeah, there's a, there's a slide on this level. Oh, really? There's a slide on this level. Like that... You know, they put in a little bit of effort on this level. There's more to it than meets the eye. Which, not bad for a guy with one of them. Uh, but yeah, no, so they joined the company. And they're in stage one of the recruitment process. Which means they have to do 15 challenges, which is the 15 levels. And then... Adobe's market cap is the same size as Disney's. Jeez, really? Because, like, Disney owns, like... Because, like, that's that's Disney including, like, all, like, the news companies and other things that they own. I guess Adobe's got, like, a very ubiquitous product. Like, Photoshop has no clear, you know, competitor. Uh, After Effects is just, like, you know, what can you do otherwise? So, uh... So, yeah, so that, that's the silver medal for getting all ten coins. Uh, you'll... you'll You'll be glad to know that, yes, in every level, I couldn't even, like, get it. You'd have to rely on an item. Anyway, you drop back down, and the last kid appears somewhere. Uh, after Disney released their streaming service, um... Oh, yeah, as well, yeah, Disney's... And Disney Plus is, like, decently big. Like, I think the, the thing that Disney Plus has is that they've, uh... You know, they've got all the exclusives. And also, on top of that, they've got... Things that are not necessarily, um, very Disney-esque properties. Like, they just have, like, um, like that Beatles documentary. Um, and also, there were a few streaming services that are also in Australia. Like, out of all the ones I know of, it's like, well, you got, um, Netflix. And it's like, what else do we have? We don't have, oh, we've got Amazon. But we don't have Hulu. But we've got Stan as, like, an alternative. Um, I'm trying to think, like, are there any other ones I've missed? Might be a bunch of other ones, but... Yeah, no, like, Disney's massive, and yet, somehow, Adobe. I guess also Adobe. Adobe has, like, that, um, that creativity. Each TV channel, oh yeah, every TV channel has their own. You know, was it 9 Now? Uh, 7, 7 Plus? I don't know. There's a lot of, there's a lot of them. There's a lot of them out there. And, uh, I think it's prob probably nigh impossible to follow, to keep track of them. Uh, so I think I've done everything outside of here. Uh, I view, yeah. 10 gem, or is it 10, 10 peach? One of them. 
Kaya. Yeah, Kaya Foxel. Oh yeah, Foxel's got its own, yeah. Which is not even Kaio, despite just being... I mean, Kaio is owned by Foxtel, but it's like, that's not even the Foxtel one. That's just the sports-only one. Foxtel's a crazy, crazy company, because it's like, there exist... Oh, I lost my control. You... you, you guys... If, if, you're, if you're watching on YouTube, watch, watch my control absolutely freeze out during that. The game was like, you're gonna land and you're gonna enjoy it. Remember, Pete's Barbershop. Is this, was that asset from whatever generic game that these guys were working on, or is it just like, I don't know. I remember like one of these games, some game out there, uh, one of these Disney licensed games legitimately got, actually probably a lot of older ones, um, like the Aladdin game on, on the SNES. It's like they legitimately got Disney artists to do all the sprite work. So the entire game looks like as good as, you know, it should. And then, uh, I don't know, something happened, and uh, we suddenly started getting into the cheapest bidder kind of approach. Which, granted, like, as much as I kind of fault this game, it's inoffensive. It works, for the most part. The input delay is probably crazy, and this button mashing could do without, but... Uh, also, I guess, the pricing, if you're actually buying it, like, legit. Uh, at the time. Like, this is, this is a rental game. I don't think there's really much to say about it. So, that's the gold medal! Woo! Woo! Now I will leave the level... ...gracefully. I love how, like... I don't even know if I'm just, like, padding time by just not exiting via the menu. But, like, I don't know, I'm 52 minutes in and that's... ...2 out of 12 levels already knocked off and I don't have to do the slide levels again. Just remember that. So... Yeah. Yeah, no, streaming services are just bizarre. Like, I mean, I understand exactly why they exist, but also just like, you know, how does one keep up with them? The, there's not enough shows that are on multiple streaming services. That, I can't, I can't get used to that. I can't get used to being like, oh, like, you know, my show's on this. And I guess like, TV's always been like that, but usually like, you don't buy TV for one company. Well, maybe Foxtel, actually, maybe that's, maybe that's exactly what it is. I never was an Ostar household, it was always a Foxtel household, and then I'd never really watch it too much. Nice! Is that ten? No, okay. Where's the remaining coin? Because, yeah, there's, there's ten coin. Time to get blinded by a lighthouse. Ooh. I mean, these levels aren't too massive, so... Oh, the yeah, AO was over, over there. I'm just going to hope that the kid doesn't respawn on this side of the harbor, because that's going to be another 20 seconds of walking. Can't believe it. 20 seconds. There you go. Oh, there you go. Oh, nice teleport. <laughs> Not bad for a guy with one eye. Nope, I'm good. No saving. Oh, the kid is dancing. And I've been hit. I've been struck by a Roblox character. So, uh... Yeah, I mentioned the uh, Forager in terms of a weird schedule, but... How about let's... Uh, to talk about the game as it is... Uh, it's a... Almost an idle game. It involves too much active attention to be an idle game. But it's effectively an easy game that's just full of progression. So how the game works effectively is that you're on a little island. Resources will sometimes spawn. You can hit them with your pickaxe. And, uh, you break them. You get experience. Uh, you get the materials. You can use them to craft, uh, things. Uh, which inevitably, uh, you want to craft, like, gold to buy more islands, but also you can craft, uh, items that people will accept in quests. The quests are all fixed, so don't worry, they're not, like, grindy quests necessarily, but, I mean, some of them just involve collecting a lot of the thing, but, 
it's not too much but also on top of that when you break when you collect re resources or craft stuff or whatever you get experience and you'll use the experience to buy skill points and the skill points can branch out into whichever direction you want to but effectively you're going to unlock new kinds of crafting and maybe get like you know passive perks towards building stuff uh effectively it follows that kind of cookie clicker uh philosophy of uh of um multiplying the dimensions of of gameplay so like you start introducing combat as a mechanic you start introducing this market as a mechanic uh it's not a roguelike uh i think if the game is pretty fixed in how uh, it starts off um so i think they they complement additional playthroughs later on with like modifiers or other things like that um but no the game's pretty like set on what it's uh what it is so i don't think it's really a roguelite i think it's more just um i, I wonder actually um because there's treasure chests in the game and the treasure chest gives you uh, a passive um kind of buff uh of something and i wonder if that is actually random so i wonder if like i've got a buff that's uh you know that other people would get lost for example um that's a kind of interesting idea and i actually think that the execution is not too shabby um i have one big quirk and that's uh the game offers uh controller support um but it's not very good uh you you can effectively if you're using the keyboard you can point to like wherever you want to like be mining or or placing items uh using the controller it doesn't let you freely move a cursor it just kind of picks awkwardly in front of you so if you want to turn slightly uh it doesn't really make it clear uh on top of that i encountered a glitch pretty early on where it started eating um the uh the attack button input for some reason on the controller uh not necessarily the x button because i could use the x button also to sort my inventory but definitely um i couldn't attack and uh this would work or this would happen until i deleted the config.ini file in the game's app data folder and that's not very fun and thank you person on scene who also encountered that same issue along with a handful of people who replied um so there's that uh the game also runs at 30 fps uh i don't know it just feels like one where i was like oh like could it be faster probably um but you know it's a quaint little game i think a lot of people probably own this game as well like magically um do you like how i got an extra life out of somewhere just, just magic uh have i gotten seven out of eight yeah okay the last one's chilling down here in the sewers out oh was he in the sewers? I wasn't paying attention. I'm pretty sure I was in the sewers. Yeah, there he is. Kid's chillin'. Uh, but yeah, no, I'd say it's pretty alright. It's on, I believe it's on the, um, Xbox Game Pass. I think. Pretty sure it is. It's also on the Humble Trove. So if you're, if you're a Humble Choice subscriber, you've actually got it sitting there. Um... And you also might just own it on Humble as well. Like, just... It's, it's been it's been part of one monthly at some point. Um, so, uh... But it's pretty alright. I don't know how much they charge for it usually. Uh, but yeah. It, it's, got a, it's got a scary dev story behind it. But ultimately, you know... If you buy it on discount, like... What are you really doing to the dev? And also on top of that, like... I'm pretty sure Humble's getting more, more of the money after release... So, uh, we'll see how it goes, uh, but it's, it's a fine game, and one where it's like, yeah, I mean, cookie clicker style games are a wonderful guilty pleasure of mine. You know, like, I can, it's, it's like the Skinner box is so obvious that it's just like, you know, exactly what that is. It's a, it's, it's a time passer, and it's a pretty neat one at that. Cool. Uh, ooh. I'm just gonna do a long jump. Probably the weirdest long jump. Yeah, optimization strategies are also great. Like, people who figure out cookie clicker speed runs, like, crazy, crazy neat people. And also, just like, it's fun seeing multiple mechanics, like, you know, combine with each other. Like, I think the worst kinds of uh, idle games, uh, this arcology game, ooh. The, yeah, the worst idle games are the ones where the mechanics don't, like, don't fit together and that's why like cookie click is great because it's just like every single feature is just like you know really really makes um 
makes the game just feel like deeper than it really is, but it's neat. I did not get this bar all the way full this time, so I don't have to do the, the puzzle. Don't worry. That doesn't have a time time wasting lockout. That as well. Uh, time wasting lockouts are a bit of a pain. I think um, Farada was like you do have to actively work towards things. So I at least I can't idle for the time being, um, and it's a handful of hours in. It's not too long of a game either, so it's not too much of a concern. But um, but yeah, no, I, I definitely do like the those kinds of games, especially when you can keep doing stuff in them. And not just like waiting. Um, I felt like a uh, adventure capitalist is like that for a while, and then it just stops, and it's like, oh, it's a bit of a shame. Uh, oh, that kid is jumping away. I'm going for the coin. Oh my gosh, that is a jump. <laughs> you like how my shadow wasn't even visible for a while. Jeez. Um, yeah, I think the phone is actually like a great platform for those kinds of games, and I do wish that there were more that like really got it actually i used to play one uh, called idle oil tycoon um which is it's i'm not even joking it's like whatever whatever like android like toolkit like people used way back in the day it's just like progress bar city and there's nothing really to it but one thing i thought was kind of neat was um it's all about just getting the multipliers from hitting like a milestone so hitting like every like 50 of a building and just like optimizing the heck out of that and then you use like your new game plus um kind of well your 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 rebirthing kind of system to effectively like do it faster and faster and faster um as like simple as it comes but i feel like the concept is just a uh, very like earnest in that one so i thought that was okay um yeah yeah I love how I probably missed a coin out in the open, because it's 9 out of 10, and then I'm gonna really, really hope that I don't have to just run back in here to get the last kid. Oop. There was one frame, there was one frame of the camera being somewhere else. I don't know what's up with that. Uh, oh yeah, because I remember there's a there's a trampoline here, but uh, wasn't there a trampoline? Well, the trampoline was always here, it was uh, the speed pads. Yeah, speed pads over here. Just one speed pad, by the way. One's all you need. Not bad for a guy with one eye. That was... I love how the camera's just clipping the wall right now. Brilliant. Okay, good. The kid's just out of here. Cool. So, yeah. So, game number three. Uh, someone judge me on this one. I played Sonic Forces. I played it on PC. This is the 2017 and actually the... Newest Sonic game, technically. Uh, play as Sonic, Sonic, or a Sonic OC character that you create that almost plays like Sonic, except the jumping is weird. Actually, all the characters jumping is weird. Uh, Sonic Forces can be easily described as it's the same Sonic game from 2008, but, uh, yeah, no, that's it. Um, so, yeah, I, like, I think the worst part about Sonic games is that, like, they really put in, like, a good amount of effort into making Sonic Unleashed half alright. Like, the, the levels in that game, great. The daytime levels, great stuff. The nighttime levels, interesting stuff. I wouldn't... It, it gets kind of average. Um, it's also very off-kilter off on the Wii, uh, which is a totally different game. Um, and then they, they somehow were like, hey, let's introduce a, a gimmick mechanic around the Sonic platforming that they had built in Sonic Unleashed, and that's what Sonic Colors was, and then they kind of said, let's go crazy on the level design, and that's what Sonic Generations was, and then let's just rip off Mario Galaxy, and that's Lost World, and now this was like, what's the gimmick? The gimmick is the OC, like, who plays like Sonic? A little bit of an interesting move there. Uh, I think I gotta go up the top. In this level um so yeah it's it's kind of weird um on top of that the game did take me two and a half hours to go from start to finish uh i found out very quickly that the sos mission so once you do a level sometimes you get prompted sos 
on that level. The SOS missions involve one of three things, randomly decided, well not random because you can tell ahead of time, but it's still something that the game decides for you. Either you are forced to play that level as someone's OC, this only happens on levels that you play on as your OC, or uh, the tag team levels where you also play with Sonic. Um, you are forced, so number two is you're forced to play uh, the level tag teaming with an OC, which means you don't change the way you play the level at all, because um, I just play as my OC. And uh, the last one is uh, you uh, you play a Sonic level and there is a uh, container of animals somewhere in the level. These are the most annoying because where that container is, the game doesn't really make it clear. Uh, usually you'll come across it, sometimes not, because, you know, multiple pathways in a level, uh, which means you'll fail those missions. What's your reward for doing an SOS mission? Absolutely nothing. I, I'm not even joking. I, I thought there was a reward, but no. Uh, you'll inevitably have to be doing it if you go for all the achievements, because you'll have to do it for the in-game challenges, but there's no incentive in-game to do them. So I stopped, and I just kept continuing on beating all the levels. And then I beat the game in two and a half hours. None of the game was really too tricky. I might die on a, a jump a couple of times. Level 20 had like a really annoying one. That was the one with the big uh, crab monster um, robot. Uh... But it wasn't anything that was like too off kilter. It was just kind of as it came. Final boss was just the final boss. Uh, the game had infinite lives as well, so if you died, you just come back to a checkpoint. Uh, they punish you by reducing your score at the end, but there's a handful of levels where your score is way too high and you'll just, you know, beat the level with an S rank, anyways. And then there's quite a couple of levels where the level with a score is uh, not enough. Like, you've really gotta, you know, you've gotta uh, not beat the level fast, you've gotta just take out enemies. Or, or collect, not collect rings, just something. You gotta, you gotta beat the level in a very specific way. It was not the most fun to get S ranks either. <laughs> um, but yeah, the game was kind of quick. And yeah, so I mentioned Sonic or Sonic or the OC. Uh, they brought back the classic Sonic from Generations. The story reason, I don't know why, and this is the part that I'm going to start laughing at, the story. Uh, so what Sonic finds out very quickly uh, is that, uh, like, there's a villain, his name is Infinite, and what, uh, he brings back the villain, he brings Shadow, Chaos, Metal Sonic, and whoever the villain from Sonic Lost World was. I'm gonna call him Drax, that's not his name. Uh, I, I just remember what the last point was. I saw it earlier as well, so that's on me. Um, uh, all those villains come up and they beat Sonic and he dies, or not dies, he gets kidnapped and sent to jail. And then uh, the game says, Months have passed, Tails has gone crazy, Sonic's been captured, but a ragtag team of, uh, of uh, you know, rebel fighters, aka everyone who's not a robot or Eggman, like, sure, uh, gonna, gonna fight him, that's the forces part of the game, and that's why your OC comes into the game, because it's like, you were the, the rookie, you're hired onto the team, uh, I don't know why they made the point that, like, everyone else was, like, captured or gave up or something, and so, like, you're the only one who, like, cared otherwise, other than, like, every other Sonic character, I don't know. And they chuck in too many Sonic characters as well, like Silver's just chillin', I, he doesn't even use his powers at all, I think, in the entire game. He's just chillin'. Uh, Amy's somewhere on base. Uh, I remember seeing um, Vector, the, the crocodile, a couple times. Um, so the villain, Infinite, what does he do? What's his superpower? This is, this is just MZU kind of stuff, isn't it? Uh, his superpower is, he makes you believe different realities. Uh, it's as in like, in gameplay, all this means is that if you get hit by one of his attacks, uh, the, the stage starts throwing like more obstacles at you for a limited amount of time as like punishment. Neat, sure, okay. Uh, in one of the other levels, it just means you also walk upside down. Oh my gosh, I forgot as well. I remember I just, I, I'm wandering around this level going like, where's that last coin? And I remember seeing it when I left the level last week. I remember seeing it there, and it just clicked in my head that that was where it was. Too busy talking about Sonic Forces, man. 
Uh, so he makes people believe different stuff. Now that's how they explain how everyone saw, you know, like all these old villains come back. And then like at some point in the game, Shadow shows up and he's like, it's an imposter me. Um, you know, right on the money as well. Among Us came out in 2017, didn't it? So this is pretty good. Also, I guess the villain's called Infinite. And there's a big war where all the Sonic people run in a field towards the other persons, uh, towards the, I guess, the villain. So, uh, there's your, there's your MCU comparison again. Uh, but it did beat Infinity War, so who ripped off who here? Um, but now here's the part I don't understand. Um, like, so if they, they bring back classic Sonic as... Like a thing where it's like, oh, if he's bringing all these villains from alternate dimensions, then it makes sense that one of them would be a good guy. And that's why Classic Sonic is there. Just one Classic Sonic. They make a point later on that there's multiple of all the villains, but also they're all fictional. So it's just like, if you don't believe they're there, which, I mean, sure, you can say the villain is powerful enough that like you know you can't you can't give in and it's just like oh like only the main characters look strong enough to like just beat it to overcome it um it doesn't really make sense why classic sonic is even there i think they forgot also on top of that i mentioned tails went crazy he comes across classic sonic and it takes half the game before like him and classic sonic find everyone else it's amazing that they've just abandoned the scene so they end up doing just very different and non sequitur things and then it's like you play as other characters later on who are who just like oh this is where they were and i know where they were because i was just playing as them like like you don't have to chase them they're trying to pull what they did in sonic adventure 2 where it's like uh, or, or sonic adventure 1 as well where it's just like oh you play as one guy's story and then Here's the next guy. But, like, imagine that, except you play both the stories concurrently. And so, like, like, I know exactly that they just did that. You don't have to, like, go, oh, and then this was the reason why they were there. It's like, nah. nah. So, a little bit weird. Um, anyways, also, yeah, while we're at it, uh, there's, like, five MacGuffins. And ultimately, one singular ruby is the thing that makes everything just, like, resolve itself in the game. Um, uh, I don't know where the ruby came from. I think they were saying that's, like, a prototype crystal. And then the actual crystal is the one the villain uses. And then the villain just forgot and just dropped it or something and left it for you. I don't really know why. I love this as well. Wow. Not bad for a guy with one that's not bad for a guy with one eye. Um... The story, I just can't get over it, so... But yeah, I, there's, there's probably about like six or so worlds, and then they each have like a bunch of levels, and a handful of the levels repeat. Like, I don't know, there's a town level, I'm pretty sure levels 14 and 15, if anyone plays the game, are the same level. I Like, they, they share so much. Um, and uh, yeah, it's... It's weird. Uh, Gameplay-wise, uh... It's a bit curious, so it's got the three levels, the three characters, three different kinds of gameplay. You play as regular Sonic, he is exactly the same as he was in Generations. He boosts, and he jumps, and he spin dashes, and that's about it. Nothing too weird, nothing too offensive, uh, just nothing too different, I guess. It's virtually the same game. Um, oh, there's a quite the guy. Um... So, yeah, there's that. Classic Sonic is almost the same deal, actually. Um, again, same deal as Sonic Generations. He just doesn't do too much. I think he's got one ability where he can do a spin dash while in the air. So when he hits the ground, he immediately zooms off. I don't think I've really used it. Um, the Classic Sonic levels, they've got the... You know, a decent design, actually. Because they, they have all these alternating pathways all over the place, whereas... The 3D Sonic? The modern Sonic? I don't even know how to phrase it. This gets too confusing, man. They don't even refer to him as Classic Sonic. They just keep saying, Sonic! Like, they expect me to realize who they're talking about all the time. Um, and then you got the OC. And the OC basically plays like the modern 3D Sonic, except he can't speed boost. He's got an attack button. 
and the attack button is basically depending on the weapon that you set on the on the player out of like eight different types he shoots a different thing also that means that he he picks up wisp power-ups for that specific item only when he walks into the specific wisp power up which means some levels you just don't get any wisp power and some levels you get so much wisp power you can't do anything about it level 25 this is how i i grinded rings for that ring achievement uh if you take hover with you you will hover the entire level and not play any of it I, I designed the game like that they wanted me to just skip that level i'll accept their conditions <coughs> oh my gosh uh and uh yeah also s some of the attacks are literally it just shoots fire in front of you and it doesn't like there's no downside it doesn't slow you down it's just literally clearing out the enemies in front of you it's very weird i think there were three powers that ended up being way too good you had burst hover and uh, the lightning which did the the light speed dash across rings the other ones i swear i could just could not find uses of one of them was like the one uh from they're all kind of based on the sonic cars ones as well um where does this go ah it gets you like five lives five lives burgers and fries there we go um yeah uh, it's it's weird um and you gotta set for for reference as well you don't know which power-ups are like favored in the level it's just something you just gotta replay the level to find out um and speaking of replaying the level if you're a completionist not only do you beat the level and then get a score there's five red rings on the levels now they've been doing this in sonic colors uh it's it's pretty standard affair but what happens when you collect all eight all five red rings on a level well then there's a a new item to collect in the level which is five numbered rings i think these are from sonic lost world as just regular like just power up things now it's an actual collectible that you've got to find and now collect in the level then you do that and then what happens well they throw in a new collectible in the level the silver ring so you the moon rings i think actually uh, you've got to collect all of them in the level in a certain amount of time. But again, it's just, you play the level normally, they're just sitting there. Uh, you're ultimately forced to play every level at least three times. Oh yeah, I should, I should keep saying force. Uh, Sonic forces me to play each level three times at least. Um, never mind also, you're probably going to play multiple times because you're not going to care the first time you play the level. Uh, you're probably not going to have the right item sometimes if it's the, the OC levels. Um... It's just so much of extra playing. Um, and then bonus points. So your OC can belong to seven, one of seven species. Each species has a perk. Two of the perks are pointless. Uh, one of them is like, oh sorry, two of the perks are way too good. One of them is, uh, I think the wolf one, which drags in items towards you. It basically means collecting rings is just easy. Another one is the bird one, which makes the double jumping like a feature because you can't double jump normally um every other thing is kind of worthless one of them is like i went with the one that was like increase your invuln period proceed to never like notice it being longer i i just couldn't tell um and certainly not abusable in any way like i just couldn't even couldn't even tell where is the, where's the kid because there's seven out of eight i've got all the coins Honestly, the kid's just chilling out of here, and I just was not paying attention because I'm... I was not paying attention. I was angry about Sonic Colors. Sonic Colors, dang it. The kid was unfazed by that one. Um, so, yeah. Ultimately, it, uh, it encapsulates into a very, very underwhelming game. Uh, <laughs> I mean, Sonic Colors or this, because I, I think both, actually. Um... They got one thing going for them, and that's the DLC, which lets you... Colors is a bit of a weird game. And it's weird because, like... Because Sonic games kept, like, trying too much and too little at the same time. And then Colors was just a bizarrely consistent game that had, like, writing behind it. I think they got, like, people who wrote for Adult Swim or something to work on the writing. And it's just, like, it feels bizarrely natural. It's strange. It's really weird. Um, and then they... Yeah, they've kind of just immediately lost it. And Sonic Colors is... 
the end of that, basically. Oh, sorry, sorry, um, Forces is the end of that. It's the last game that they made, although uh, they've got a new one coming out. We'll see how it goes. Um, and it's weird, because they did a 360 or a 180. Instead of trying lots of things, this game feels like it's the exact same game again. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I got one last hilarious point, and that is... Uh, so, after beating the game... Uh, there's a, there's a shadow prequel to the game. Just free DLC. I don't know if people paid money for it, and I hope they didn't, but sure. Uh, I think I've got to put the... I don't know if these stayed here. I don't think they did. Oh, they must have. Shadow with a gun. I wish it was Shadow with a gun. Instead, it's Shadow playing almost exactly the same levels that Sonic was. Like, actually almost the same. Uh... You know, not bad for, not a, bad for guy. a guy with one eye. Um... And, uh, it was three levels. It was, like, 15 minutes tops. Maybe 10 minutes. And then it's like, oh, you can go for S-Ranks, well, you could go for all those collectibles again. Um, my favorite part is that the three levels, the first level was like, oh, uh, Omega's gone crazy. Uh, you gotta, you gotta save him. And he doesn't show up in the level. He, I just chase, like, what could have been him, but I don't know. Uh, then... The game cuts to a, like, one month ago or something like that. Um, and then it's just like, why why did Infinite hate everyone? And literally, I'm not even joking, it's a rehash of a level in the, the, the main game. And at the end, a cutscene plays where Shadow kicks a guy in the face. And then the guy is like, I'm not weak, I'm not weak. And then he becomes infinite or uh, something. I don't really know why, but it that's that's it. That's the reason. That's this guy's backstory. He gets kicked in the face by Shadow, and suddenly he what he now just becomes Thanos. I, what is his goal? Wipe out, exterminate Sonic characters? I mean, I guess if you hate Sonic, your fan fiction's that much, maybe. But. That's that. And then you play level 3 and all it is is Shadow just experiences delusions for a level. And then he, he just finishes and then that was it. It doesn't even cut to credits or anything. Uh, it just ends. Sonic- I- oh yeah, Sonic Boom is the fanfiction guy. The- the cringe episode. How much- how much Sonic Boom have you seen? All I- I know of a handful of like, off, uh, you know, out of context jokes. I think the one where, uh, who's Roger? It's probably my favorite. But, uh... But yeah, nah, that, uh... That show as well, that show is weird. And also, I guess, the films! Oh, we've got a second film coming out this month. With Idris Elba. It's amazing. You like how, by the way, I'm playing the levels I was playing at the beginning of the stream like an hour ago? Like, I've already gone through 100% of the rest of the game. Like, all it is is just go through, pick up the tokens, new kid comes up, scream at the kid, done. And Sega comes back using Sonic films. The weirdest part is that, like, is Sonic bigger or not as big as he was in the 90s? Because, like, that was, like, this huge fever with, like, Sonic versus Mario. And I feel like, in retrospect, it should have been very, very clear it was Mario the entire way. And it's just marketing made made Sonic as, as big as it was. Because, yeah, on the other hand, it's like, well, I mean, we've got Sonic film. And, 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 and I think a film as well that people are very, like, alright with. Like, I guess you had a Super Mario Brothers film, and, and granted, we got another Super Mario Brothers film coming out, so, uh, who knows what's gonna go on with that. But, um, is that this year, by the way? True, true. Also, my brain just remembered the, uh, the Borderlands film that's coming out. Unironically, I think that film will probably be better than the games. Uh, although I think if people know my opinion on the games, then, uh, then is that, but... Yeah, yeah, to, to put it all together, Sonic Forces is... Uh, oh, yeah, Uncharted! Oh, gosh, that also happened! No, but that's actually a Borderlands film. That's got Jack Black in it. Not the Mario film. That's got Jack Black in it. And the Uncharted film, I don't think it's Jack Black, but a lot of films are Jack Black. Also, I guess Jumanji was a video game film, so Jack Black is doing a lot of them right now. Not bad for a guy with one eye. Not bad for a guy with one eye. Uh, 
Man, yeah, what? Jeez, I blink for a moment and now there's all these video game films out of nowhere. The kid is cold. Get him out of here. His mum used to work for NASA. Oh. Dude, it's kind of crazy, like... I guess, like, yeah, celebrities having, like, really... Really big, uh... Parents. Gosh, this is the second stream in a row I'm gonna mention this, but, uh... <laughs> I was gonna say, um... It was a Willow Smith, uh, single. That just came out, like, a few days ago. I was just like, I don't know how her music career is going, but, uh... One of the comments was saying, uh... This, uh, this song slaps just as hard as her dad, <laughs> and I'm just like, oh no, oh no. <laughs> I, <laughs> that whole debacle, I, I don't even know anything really about it, but, you know, to an outsider, that's, uh, it's good television. I don't know, as long as I don't fight <laughs> too much. Apparently, apparently the, the, um, the Oscars itself is, like, the, the thing that really is gonna hurt from this, which is weird, because, like, I was gonna say, like, I didn't even think the Oscars was gonna be a thing, like, this year. I thought it was just gonna be, like, a, like, they just tell you the awards and that's it. But, no, like, that was a proper Oscars presentation they had, um, because they did the, like, the smaller conference room, uh, like, last year, and it was very, very weird. Very, very sad. Um... Oh, yeah, 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 Le legit. If if Chris Rock was, like, legit injured out of that, then that wouldn't have been, you know, not, not cash money. Um, Oscars, yeah, not bad for a guy with one eye. I think the worst part is, uh, he probably could have. He probably could have, but I, I think, like, I'm not saying the slap was right, but this is like, well, I mean... I don't even know. I, I can't even, like, get into the mind of, uh, of, uh, what actually, like, happened, really. I think, uh, I think it's a complicated scenario, so, uh, all I'll say is, uh, you know, might, might have been paid actors, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> nah. Do I, do I really float the conspiracy theory? I was, I was saying it as a joke. I, I, screw the presentation but like do people legit like bought into this like whole theory of like how the slap was staged and i was just like i thought the joke would have been screamed um like i i, I thought all the jokes are, are screened and, and and stuff like that but might have not been but i feel like well whatever that reaction is just like you do not swear on on live tv and, and uh, get away with it i'm amazed as well nbc i think who are airing in the u.s like caught it and, and just muted like hard mute for 30 seconds on that uh channel 7 in australia or uh one japanese channel very unfortunate they didn't get that but uh dude i'm already standing in front of the door um yeah like man crazy crazy night it weird i guess anything really like when stuff happens really unexpectedly on live tv like, that is, like, the magic of television, and, uh, something that, you know, I, I hope is captured by Twitch and other kinds of things, is, uh, capturing those moments live. Like, capturing, really, anything weird and crazy live. Um, just cause, like, you know, hey, it's, it's recorded media, and it can be, you know, relived, whereas, like, there's so much, like, history, like, really ancient history, that's, just like, you know, a guy recounts it. Or a guy was like, kind of there. Um, like, I remember in, in high school, it's like, reading about uh, Hannibal the Great. And it's just like, man, you know, like... I don't know how much of that stuff was actually, like, a guy writing it there. Who, who wrote that? Catullus? No, Catullus was a, was a poet. Who has a really grotesque one. Don't Google Catullus 14. Or 15. I think it's 14. Don't Google that. <laughs> um... Okay, Blender checkbox. Quoted Catullus 14. Go for it. <laughs> Go wild. Um, but like, I, I find like live recordings of, of broadcasts to be just like a really like fun part of modern history is the fact that like so many things um, 
do get recorded. And then bonus points. So many things are still interpreted, despite the source being so readily available. It's the fact that, like, rec recording things as they happen still doesn't give you the clearest picture to everything. Maybe it gives you a more clear picture than things used to be, but... Uh, it's very amazing, so... So yeah, like, I don't know, we all watched that slap, and yet, it's like, well... Why? And to some degree, what? <laughs> Like, people, people judge the actual event, people judge the, the context leading up to it. Do I have to be Sully? Like, do I just not jump this? If I might? Oh, I just gotta, I just gotta ride the wall a little bit. I just gotta hold forward, hope for the best. It's a very, very, very bizarre uh, turn of events, so... But, yeah, who knows what's gonna happen. All I'll say is, uh, please, Oscars, keep having more drama like this. I don't care if you're going to pretend that Moonlight does not win Picture of the Year. The Grammys also happened. I don't know anything that happened with that. All I know is uh, the St. Vincent album won an alternative album of the year. I was like, oh, that's neat. It wasn't my biggest like cup of tea album, but I was like, you know, I see like where she's going with it. And she did alright, so... So, uh, yeah. But I don't really know too much about uh, the rest of the Grammys. Uh, this year. Oh, they put ice physics in just one part of the game. We thought it'd be fun. And then we put a locked door behind the other side. I love how I usually just skip, like, most of this level, because, like, why even play it? What did, what did they put these tokens here for? It's like, just, they expect you to do... Very awkward double jump, because this is the, uh... The road to nowhere down there. I appreciate I tried, just for an extra life, except I didn't get my extra life. So... Yeah. So with that, I feel like, uh... Maybe I should speak partially re retrospectively about this game, because, uh... The moment I get, uh... Three more tokens and two more kids in this level, that's it, that's the entire game. Uh, I think it probably took just over three hours. Um, I don't know... I don't know if anyone speedruns this game. Uh, it's probably a bit too obscure and probably not the most like fun one to watch. Maybe there's some fun glitches from here and there, but I think you've effectively just got to you know, collect everything. Uh, which, in collectathons, like 100% in collectathons, unless there's some fun mobility kind of stuff that you can do. Um, like a Spyro is a fun one, I find. Um, I don't think there's really a, a better option. I don't know what exactly I'm doing. Is it just I'm hitting X at the right time? Who knows? Um, yeah. Yeah. Mario 64 is another fun one. I think it's because the collectathon is just limited to getting stars. Uh, but a game like this where it's just like I've literally just got to collect everything. Maybe I should get this. Or I should have just had that to begin with. Had a shortcut all the time. I don't care about your token. This is a bizarre level, I'll tell you that. Like, it's just strangely larger than the other levels. It reminds me of a... <laughs> fart boost, yeah. Where are Mike Wazowski's internal organs? Can we get like an anatomical, like, drawing of Mike Wazowski? Maybe it's just like dwarfism, you know, like, they're all there. Cars are around- oh, oh, I shouldn't get you started about the Cars universe, should I? Look at this kid just like fixing the satellite. Is, is, is there really brain- Oh, is the brain really in the driver's seat? Oh, no. Would, would it be under the hood? Would it be under the hood? Because if you crash, you get like concussion. Oh! We are here today to once again congratulate James P. Sullivan and Michael Wazowski for their impressive completion of level two of the academy. Level two, gang! 
I am honored to present you both with these silver medals to commemorate your achievement. Look at that. Oh my gosh, Mike's teeth. <laughs> I don't know what's going to be the video thumbnail. Oh my god, that teeth. You know what's the best part? It boots you out of the level. I was right there. The happiness trick. Oh, dude, yeah. Well, the, the real happiness was the smiles they brought upon their faces. How well do you think they pay in the Monsters, Inc. company? I was going to say the universe, but it's really just the company. It's enough to get them a house, but they still live with each other. They went to school with each other. They're real broskies. I'm going to try to each emotion. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think the whole, the, like, the analogy is it's like coal power. It's like, oh, the evil fossil fuel company. And it, it uh, you know, it's like, oh, this is the way that it works for them. Makes them a lot of money. So they, you know, they try and censor, you know, any other attempt. That's why they don't let you, you know, come to contact with a the child. They, they associate it with the, the, you know, touching stuff. Oh, touching stuff. That's, that's uh, not the right, right phrasing. Um, that, like when, you know, you come into contact with a child and you got a 2319, you gotta, you gotta shave everything. It's like, oh, a bit painful. Um, so I think that's that. And then it's like, you know, kids laughter is like green energy where it's like, oh, it works. Um, a more nuanced view would obviously be like, you know, it's a place for all energy, I guess. Uh, what do they do to Mike? Oh, they put him up to the scream machine, don't they? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they put him on the scream machine. But I don't know if that was just them testing on, on Mike. I don't know what was that, so... Maybe they give him eye drops or something. A big scrub. And that, like, black toothpaste. You know, the one like the charcoal toothpaste. Um, like, yeah, it's a it's a nice fun little idea uh, for a film. Not bad for a guy with one eye. Not bad for a guy with one eye. So there you go. There's all the nerves in the level. I shall actually save that one because that is indeed game. That's that's it. This actually, yeah, like what has it been three hours twenty or so? Maybe a little longer. Maybe a little less. But, yeah, it's not a very long game. Um, and I think uh, as a kid, I probably realized that as well, so. They appreciate Mike's very, very large suit. Completion of the Academy, level three training. Medals, please. Uh, yeah, yeah, I've got the Twitch tag on 90%. Whoops, this was 100%. Sorry, guys. These golden medals symbolize the highest level of accomplishment here at the Academy. Henceforth, you will be known as Top Scare Team and will be entitled to all the rights and privileges thereof. Congratulations to you both. All right! They did a. They graduated, and then Mike dies. Imagine being the only two people that graduate. I mean, granted. Oh, oh everyone's favorite part of the film. This is such like a non sequitur as well, because you play the game, it's a prequel, and then... Here's the scene where I'll kidnap a thousand children before I let this company die. Yeah, you play that scene back to back. You know what I, I kind of wonder as well? Is that voice sample a little different to how it is in the film? I remember it being a little bit high pitched. I actually wonder whether this is a, a, a not a demo take, but just like they'll do some last minute takes. That being said, like you know, the timing of the film is a uh, 
right? So who knows? Maybe they just use a different take. Anyway, that's the game. It literally kicks in with credits. Artificial minor movement. That's right. That's what A2M stands for. Not a uh, Arsenal. Yeah, maybe they couldn't afford it. Uh, who's, who's, who did the music? Who did the music? We gotta find who did the music. Uh, I love how many people it did take to make this this game though, but I mean I guess that's probably what it is. Is there's a lot of people and not much time. Darude, who did my music? Who did my music? I'm 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 looking through. We've got the testers for- oh wait, there we go. Look at that! They didn't even put their first names in. <laughs> they didn't even put their first names in! Who, who were these people? Who were they? I love how, by the way, the song has led into a different song, which means uh, it's probably a different audio track on disc. I actually wonder whether um, because uh, there's a there's a handful of um of games where the uh, the audio is in red book format, which means like you can legitimately just put it into a CD player or rip the audio using any other traditional means, um, like that. Any game using using Redbook Audio is just oh top shelf. So Sega CD, Sega Saturn, um, PS One games like if they were in that format, it's great. Uh, not every game, of course. Um, if you're using emulators, just note the ones that have uh, one track for the bin queue. Uh, if there's multiple bins, then you're in luck. That's that's a game that you can down to you know play in the disc uh, or in a CD player. But yeah, no, this game. It's a, it's, it's an average collectathon. There's not really too much to say about it, but I thought it's kind of interesting. And especially as a very late PS1 game. Um, and then the game just boots you out because it knows. Also, by the way, if you forgot to save, yeah, whoops. Uh, yeah, there's, there's nothing left. The game just ends there. Uh, is there a cheat code? Can I show off a cheat code? I would like to show off a cheat code. That'd be kind of cool. Monsters, Inc. Scream Team. Game facts. 12 medals. Is that really all we're doing? Uh, well, uh, this is some boring cheat codes. It's just 99 lives, full scare meter, and max health. We've got a guide. One singular guide in 2003, which just describes pretty much high level, just what I just did. So, yeah. Yeah, that's about it. That's about it. What a shame that there's not really much to really say beyond this. Uh, I guess... Me as a kid growing up, uh, I had a Monsters, Inc. game on the GBA as well. That's right, I double dipped in licensed games sometimes. Um, and it was a kind of interesting game. It was a... It was a... 2D platformer, but with like a, a, a Z level, just like a little bit of a, like you can move between different layers, like it's an old fighting game. Um, and it was actually kind of weird, it was almost a beat em up, but it was also kind of a platformer, but it was kind of a collectathon ish It was a bit weird, I can't really describe it. Um, the demos in the game are just, you know, as they are. What font is that, by the way? Who knows? Uh, but yeah, nah, the demos just play the game for a bit, but yeah, I don't have too much to say other than, I guess, uh, if you want to know what other games A2M, oh no, I typed A2M, may refer to, uh, A2 Milk Company, there you go, there you go, a, a more wholesome thing, uh, but yeah, these, these devs did so many licensed games, I see in there, uh, like, The Grinch, Home on the Range, Disney's Kim Possible, Two, uh, Lizzie McGuire Two, uh, Disney Move for the iToy, Toy, Teen Titans, The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody, Tip Ton Trouble, uh, like the list goes on. They're all licensed games, except, except, amazingly, near the end of their career, before they got renamed. By the way, they're, they're still they're still a company. They they've been renamed to Second Behavior Interactive. You know what I see on this list? 
wet, as in the Bethesda published, by the way, Bethesda published that game, that weird, like, game with the, um, effectively the bombshell character. That's, that's them. Interesting. Uh, I also see on this list, uh, Naughty Bear. That was them. And then they got renamed to Behavior Interactive, which, uh, I, I guess also being called B.E. Behavior is just, you know, they're not really, not really saving themselves out of there, but I see, uh, well, I see Doritos Crash Course in that list. Uh, but is there another game that's interesting on this list? Nothing really too, too recent. Oh my goodness. Never mind. You know what? They were responsible for Fallout Shelter. Thank you very much, guys. This is the guys who made Fallout Shelter, apparently. This is, this, this is their legacy. Ah, <laughs> uh, oh well. Anyways, with that, I would like to thank you all so very much for watching. If you enjoyed this, you can follow on, on Twitch or subscribe on YouTube. I actually realize I have, I, I feel so wholesome, I have 87 followers on Twitch. That feels very nice. I remember doing like a 57 subscriber special on YouTube at one point. Uh, nowadays, it's very hard to count how many people are subscribed on YouTube. But if you are not one of them, you can join the elusive club. Uh, that's about it. Uh, I'll do another stream next week. Uh, not the week after, that's Easter. I'm spending Easter with my parents. So I'm going to try and find a one-off game for next week. That'll be fun. Uh, and if you missed some of this, the VOD will be on YouTube. Uh, with a dumb thumbnail, as it always is. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys keep well. Uh, stay safe. Um, yeah, the streams will continue at this time because daylight savings. But yeah, no, stay safe, eat your greens, don't stay up too late, uh, look both ways before you cross the road, and uh, monsters live in your cupboard or under the bed. Don't say anything to the hat man. <laughs>